Hello friends, thank you so much for watching and in today's video we are going to answer one of the questions that we get asked the most. A lot. A lot. In fact, 24 hours ago we got home from vacation and we have already been asked this question. The question, how the heck do you guys travel so much? So in this video, we're going to tell you some of the tips and tricks that we have learned and used to save money when traveling. Uh, we are not wealthy by any stretch of that word. <laughs> However, we found ways that make travel affordable for us. Uh, we have also made it just one of our priorities. You know, every person, every couple has the priorities of where they want their money to go. And we have basically narrowed it down to two. Um, generosity, we want to meet practical needs of others. And then we also want to put our money toward experiences. Yeah, so uh, so we believe that that every person, like Sherry said, every person or couple should have those areas that are their those are their focus. Those are the things that they want to. Those are the areas they want to live big in. Mm -hmm. And what that requires is living small in other areas. So for us, um, you know, we have two cars. We have a 2009 Nissan Versa, the cheapest car you can buy new in America, which we, we did not buy new. We bought it used. <laughs> uh, and then a 2000 Ford Taurus that was given to us. So we have kind of crappy cars. Uh, we live in an 11,000, nope, 1100 square foot home. <laughs> that would have been a game changer. An 1100 square foot home, uh, just a townhouse that uh, we bought for $159,000. The average home in Anchorage is like 350000 so we have like a small place, but um, having cars and houses that are smaller mm -hmm. and on the lower end allow us to live bigger in areas like generosity and in areas like experiences and travel. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think that the life priority conversation uh, has to be number one. But remember, there's no right or wrong. No. in this. You so, have your own priorities and that's great. Yeah, there are people that we know that their priority is their home because they love entertaining. They want like a safe place for their family. Like they want to be comfortable at home. So home is their priority. Uh, we have lots of friends where kids are their priority, right? Like uh, being in like a private school or playing sports and activities. So resources go there. Um, there's no right or wrong in this. No. Just decide what is, uh, what is for you and then live big in those areas, but know that it will require you living small in other areas. Everything you say yes to, you say no to something else. That's right, we've chosen to say yes to uh, generosity and to experiences, obviously travel being a big one of those, uh, but that means that we have to say no to a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So practically, how do we save money when we travel? Uh, we do it in a couple ways. Number one, be flexible on dates. Now we are fully aware that we don't have kids and that makes travel a lot easier because we're not tied to spring break and Christmas break and summer vacation. Um, and so if you can travel on uh, the times of year when other Off people, seasons. yeah, when people aren't traveling, you can save a lot of money. Yes. And that's what we do. Um, in fact, with the exception of this last trip, almost every one of our trips is during on the off season. During weird times, mm -hmm. because we can be flexible. So that's a big one. Uh, the second one has to do with the hotel, uh, the hotels you stay in. Yep. That's always one of the biggest, uh, outside of maybe, maybe airfare, hotels the biggest expense when traveling. Um, you know, I spent a, uh, over a dozen years in the travel industry, in the hotel industry specifically. So I've learned a lot of tips and tricks. Uh, this basically saved us a lot of money. Yep. Now I do, I, I refuse to stay in like a hostel. He has done it, it's not for me. Um, <laughs> I'm high maintenance, I'm allowed, to, I, I, I can admit that. Um, but I, you know, I don't need like the highest end hotel, but I want it clean and I want it safe. Those are my Well, yeah, not even the highest end, like you're part of like a Best Western if right. it's clean and safe. If it's clean and safe, I'm good. Yeah, like, so, I just... so when I book travel for us, when I book hotels, I know clean and safe are the two things my wife wants. <laughs> uh, but when I'm booking travel, I never go to Marriott.com or Hilton.com. Uh, now the plus side to those hotels, or to, or to those websites, is you go and you know I'm booking a king room at this hotel on these dates. You're, everything is solid, you get exactly what you want. Um, but that's the most expensive way to do it. So what we do is I actually use a website called betterbidding.com to book our hotels. So just super quick rundown on better bidding. Basically the hotel sells a room to better bidding for $100 a night, right? Uh, or to Priceline for $100 a night. On Priceline you can bid for hotel rooms. but the traveler doesn't know that they could book that room for a hundred bucks a night. They don't know what that basement is. They don't know what that basement bottom line number is. So the hotel and Priceline hope you bid for $150 a night so you spend more. So better bidding is just simply a forum of higher volume travelers who log every time they win or lose a bid on Priceline. So that you can know what that basement bid is. Exactly. So when I go to Priceline to bid on a hotel room, I'm not just bidding blindly. I have an idea 
you know, that, oh, I might be able to get this hotel for $89 a night, which is exactly what just happened to us. On this last trip, um, we spent four nights at a Sheraton resort in California that was super oh, nice, nice, like four star plus hotel. The best bed I've ever slept in. It was a great hotel. <laughs> if you went to the Sheraton website, it was $219 a night. So for four nights, after you include taxes, we're almost $1,000. I'm not spending a thousand bucks for four nights at a hotel. I'm sorry. Um, and so I went on better bidding. I checked prices that were winning, went on Priceline, ended up getting that same hotel for $89 a night. That's awesome. Like that's <laughs> so great. Um, now do we know exactly what hotel we're staying at? No, we know a general area and we know a star rating, which mm -hmm. honestly is good enough for us. Yeah. Like we've never been burned. We've never you know, thought we were going to get a Sheraton and we got a Motel 6 because, <laughs> you know, again, we book three star and higher hotels normally. Um, so that's the way we save money on hotels. How do you think that works for you? Somebody who likes to plan things, is it? Is I think it's great. I mean, because, you know, again, you are choosing your star rating and then we still go through and look at reviews. He's really good about, like, he'll go on to all the different websites and try to figure out which hotel it might oh, be yeah. and then go to that hotel's website and look at it. I'll look like, at it on TripAdvisor. I'll be like, oh, it's a three-star hotel for 89 It might be this hotel. He's yeah. like... <laughs> oh, yeah, I do that all the time. I do a ton of research. Um, so that's how we save money on hotels, and that's where we save the most amount of money when we travel, yeah. hands down. Uh, for car rental, we do something similar. I compare all of the travel sites uh, with each other, find it the lowest daily rate, and book that. Uh, we, we also all... go small. Yeah, we book the smallest car. Uh, well... We book the cheapest car, which almost always Usually is the smallest, is the smallest car. car. Now, it can be a little awkward. Basically, I am the size of some small <laughs> compact cars like this last trip. We had trip. a Yaris. We, we did, and it was, it was a bitty it was car. It big. It fit us in our three suitcases. <laughs> but you know what? It got us in our three suitcases places, uh, the exact same places that a midsize car would have. Yep. Uh, so we saved money on that. Uh, really, for us, it's about being flexible. It's about... Um, doing what saves the most money while still also being comfortable. And two just super quick examples, like practically how this looks for us. Uh, you know, we recently booked a trip to Paris in May. I saw the tickets come on sale on Twitter, like uh, $450 round trip, Anchorage to Paris. I called Sherry at work. I was like, we're going to Paris, right? And she <laughs> said yes. Yeah. Um, so we booked the tickets to Paris. Uh, we're there for nine nights. Now, Paris is an incredibly expensive city, but I didn't want to spend more than $1,000 for our hotel in Paris, which is not easy to do. So I went on Priceline, went on a Hotwire, went on Airbnb and VRBO and started looking. Uh, you know, and we also wanted like a real bed, not a sofa pullout, you know? Which is very common yeah, in Paris. Sofa pullouts realize. are hugely common, especially <laughs> on Airbnb and VRBOs. So we wanted like a real bed. Um, you know, we wanted, we didn't want like a fifth floor walk up so that after a long day walking the streets of Paris, you have to do five flights of stairs. So we were a little more picky, but still I wasn't gonna budge on the price. Uh, I looked for probably two weeks, and I found a Every few night. things, Every but night. like nothing that I loved, nothing I felt good booking. Uh, and then one night we were sitting here, and I saw this hotel for eighty-nine dollars, and I was like, "What? Like it fit the star rating we wanted? It fit the part of town we wanted?" And I hadn't seen it. Like there was no deal like this before. And so instantly I like started doing my research. I figure out which hotel I think it might be. We book it, ends up it is that hotel. So we got a great, like a four-star hotel in a great neighborhood in Paris uh, for $89 a night. I stayed below the $1,000 limit that I wanted. So super happy about that. Uh, the next example, you know, next month we are going on a Disney cruise. After the Disney cruise, we're spending a few days with family at a beach house. And then we were going to spend two nights at uh, the Port Orleans Resort at Disney World. You guys know we love Disney, but we've never stayed at a Disney Resort because so expensive. of the money. <laughs> we can't justify spending the money. Uh, Port Orleans Resort for two nights was gonna be $300 a night. So like, We were not gonna do the parks. We were just gonna do the hotel. Because of the cost. It was kind of one or the other for us. Yeah, it was one or the other. But still, $600 for two nights at a hotel. And so earlier tonight, we had the conversation about like, I don't think at this time right now, with like I've gone part-time at my job this year, <laughs> it's not a good time to be spending $300 a night on a hotel room. Nope. So we canceled. Um, and what we're going to do is we're staying with my family at the beach house an extra night for free. And then we're staying at a Holiday Inn that uh, we found on Priceline for 79 bucks a night. It's a three-star hotel, has a water park attached. That's awesome. Um, do we miss out a little bit on, like, the Disney experience? Yes. Probably. But at the same time, we're going to save uh, enough money for another plane ticket on a future vacation. Right. You know, just by changing that. Um, so for us, again, it's... We've chosen the area of travel and experience to be an area of our life that we live big in. Mm -hmm. It does require us to live smaller in other areas. But 
That's what we do. That's how we travel so much. It's a priority for us and we're smart about booking. We're smart about where we stay and when we go. And it is more time consuming. It's a lot easier to go to Marriott.com and click a room. It really is. Absolutely. I do spend more time, but I save a lot of money mm -hmm. doing it, uh, which makes it kind of all worth it. Yeah. We will say, we've talked about someday, we are gonna go on a vacation. We wanna do the high end all the way. Where it's like, we wanna stay at the Disney Resort and we wanna like rent the convertible. <laughs> like one day, we're gonna probably go on like one of these vacations. Uh, that is gonna be awesome. But I'm not going to lie, I love the fact it's that... It's not today. It's definitely not today. <laughs> but I also love the fact that, because if we went on that kind of vacation, that means that during the course of a year, we could probably do one vacation. That's probably That would be like our one trip. Whereas this year, we're going to go on three or four trips for the price that we would spend on one of those high-end vacations. Right. So, we love traveling. We're so excited about all the trips we have coming up. And we hope this has helped you. Um, I'll put links below for the websites and stuff that we use or uh, things that I mentioned in this video and leave us a comment below. Are there websites or travel tips or travel tricks that you have learned? We love learning about new things. Yes, we uh, so leave us a comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching and we hope 2017 is full of lots of travel and adventure for you. If you have not figured out what your priorities are, what are the, th what are the areas of your life you want to live big in? Start there and then live big in those areas. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you so much for watching and we'll see y'all soon.